If you're running a .NET 5 application in production, you're about to be left with no support. Let's talk about what you need to do today to stay up to date. Hello world, I'm Nick Proud, a software engineer and huge .NET fan. Today we're talking about the fact that .NET 5 support is coming to an end, what that means for you and what you need to do to get your apps up to .NET 6. So let's get right into the news from Microsoft, reported on the .NET blog in late March of 2022, that .NET 5 will reach the end of support on May the 8th of this year. .NET Program Manager Rahul Bandari confirmed that following the .NET May updates, quote, Microsoft will no longer provide servicing updates, including security fixes or technical support for .NET 5. You'll need to update the version of .NET you're using to a supported version before this date in order to continue to receive updates. So I think the biggest concern with this is around security. Obviously, if we get to May and you still haven't updated to .NET 6, your apps are still going to run. However, if you no longer receive security updates, that's a problem. Bandari goes on to state that security updates going forward will only be for supported versions of .NET, so .NET Core 3.1 and .NET 6, meaning that if a computer has 5.0 installed, he says that it's likely unsecure. And if you run into any technical issues, it's not necessarily guaranteed that you're gonna get support, which is not a situation you wanna be in. But luckily, Upgrading in most scenarios is pretty straightforward and the sooner the better. First off, when it comes to any version update of a framework, you're going to want to check for any breaking changes. So Microsoft has published a list of breaking changes for .NET 6, which you can see here, and I'll provide a link to this in the description of the video. I'm going to show you a simple example of how you can update the .NET framework version of an application, but I'm also going to do that under the condition that I have no breaking changes. Your apps, on the other hand, are in production, so it's more likely to be affected by breaking changes. So my advice is not only to check the breaking changes Microsoft have published, but also to use a version control system, preferably Git, and that your upgrade is first tested on an isolated branch of your source code, which you should be doing in any case case, right? That way, once all your unit tests and other testing is passed, you can merge everything back in, and there you have it, lovely new .NET 6. In terms of how to actually perform the upgrade, first you need to install .NET 6 on your machine, but you may already have it. If you don't, Visual Studio provides you a handy link on how to download it. So let's take a look at actually upgrading a .NET 5 application up to .NET 6. To demonstrate this, I'm showing you a very, very simple console application. So simple, in fact, that it just has one line of code. Obviously, your applications are way more complicated than this, but this is just an easy way to, to demonstrate the uh, change from .NET 5 to .NET 6. What I'm doing here is I'm simply writing out to the console the current .NET version. So what this should print out is that I'm using a version of .NET 5. Then we're going to change it to .NET 6 and we should see that version increment. Uh, and then you know, really the purpose is just to show you where in Visual Studio you can do this uh, and how you can install .NET 6 if you don't already have it installed. So I'll just go ahead and run this console. It will use environment.version to show the version of .NET. So we run that and you can see this app is running version 5.0.15 uh, so we're clearly running .NET 5. Now if I for example checked all the breaking changes as we talked about in the beginning of the video uh, you know we want to go in and check to make sure that there's nothing that Microsoft has introduced in .NET 6 which could potentially break our application. Obviously we can't just trust that on its own so We've also, we're also assuming that you will have made a branch in Git and that it is segregated from your uh, mainline branches, your development branches or your main branches, and that it's safe to test with. And so to make the actual change, I'm going to go up to the program level of the Solution Explorer and I'm going to click Properties. And so in Visual Studio 22, we have this screen. Uh, which gives us various properties for the application. And the one we're concerned with is target framework. So this is where you can change the actual version of .NET that the application will target. Now, if you have .NET 6 installed already, so as you can see here, I'm currently using .NET 5, I have .NET 6 installed, so I can see that inside this dropdown. I also have several versions of .NET Core installed as well, .NET Core 3.1 being a long-term support release. Uh, if you don't have .NET 6 installed, then you can still install it from here. Visual Studio provides 
uh, this handy link which you can click and it will take you over to this web page. So you can see here you can download the .NET SDKs for Visual Studio. And what we're essentially doing here is we're downloading the .NET 6 SDK. Now at the time of this video, .NET 7 is actually in preview. So you kind of have a choice. You if you want to be you know, if you want to feel if you're feeling a bit crazy, you could install .NET 7, but it's a preview release. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I haven't actually tried it myself yet, but for production applications, preview is never really a good idea. For this video, we're going to move up to .NET 6. As you can see here, it's in long-term support, which means that it's going to be supported in the long term. It means that we're good to use this for quite a while. So depending on the architecture of your machine, whether it's 64-bit or 32-bit, you can get the runtime here. You simply download it and then it runs the usual installation wizard, uh, restart Visual Studio, and once you've done that, you should then be able to see .NET 6 available in this dropdown. Once you've installed .NET 6, it's very simple. You just have to click .NET 6, and then we click Rebuild. And as you can see in the bottom left, Rebuild All succeeded. So I can run this application, and now you can see that the version that has been printed out to the console has changed to version 6.0.3. So as you can see, this is quite straightforward as long as the breaking changes don't affect you. So again, make sure you check the breaking changes published by Microsoft and that you use version control to branch your application uh, before you test this to make sure everything compiles. And as long as you do that, you should be good. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you want exclusive content that I only share with subscribers, then head over to my website, automationmission.com and hop on the newsletter it's free. Now I want to hear from you. What version of .NET are you currently using and what are you using it for? Are you currently making the change? And if so, I hope it's going well for you. If not, then give me a shout. Let's see what we can fix. Until next time, I'm Nick Proud and keep coding.